Welcome back. In our last lesson, we just completed the model class that will support our edit page. The JFORM class that powers the edit page will need an XML file to describe the types of fields the edit page will be displaying. By default, JFORM will look for these XML files in a folder called Forms under the Components Models folder. So let's create that and move on to creating the XML file. This file will, by convention, have the same name as the model, so we call it message.xml. Copy your index.html files into the new folders as we've done in previous lessons. Now, have a look in the snippets list for backend item XML form and insert that. This snippet has two variables, one for the option of the component in uppercase and one for the lowercase name of the edit view. Insert the snippet and let's take a look. Now, we had a very brief look at some JFORM XML in an earlier lesson when we looked at the component configuration options. As usual, we start the XML file with the XML prologue. The next line is an XML comment that's used if you are storing your code in Subversion or maybe CVS. If you're using a distributed version control system like Git or Mercurial, you can remove this line. So we start the XML off with a wrapping form tag and then open a field set tag with no attributes. This field set will hold most of the fields for the database. Let's step through them. The first field element is for the ID field of our table. Most of the fields follow a convention that is similar to input tags used in HTML forms. Each field has a mandatory name attribute and this normally corresponds to the name of the database field. So, for this field, the name is ID. Each field has a type and this generally marries with the type of HTML form element we want to display. The default is text and this is what we've chosen for the ID field. This will render as a typical HTML input tag with a type attribute of text. The next two attributes are for the label and the description. The label attribute will be the label associated with the HTML form element and the description will be the tip that displays when you hover over the label. You can give a field an optional default value that would be used when creating a new item. For the ID field we set this to zero but you could leave it out if you want. A field can also be given a class and this will correspond to the class attribute in the HTML form. A field can also be given a class and this will correspond to the class attribute in the HTML element. The Joomla Administrator style sheet has a style for read-only fields, so that's what we'll use for the ID field. We don't want users to change that. Lastly, we have attributes that you would see in a normal HTML input tag, such as the size, and also the read-only attribute is set to true. Much of this markup is very similar to the old J parameter fields that you might be familiar with from Joomla 1.5. In contrast, JFORM not only helps display a form, but also processes the submitted data. Setting the read-only attribute to true will mean that when the form is processed, the value for the ID field will actually be stripped from the data by the JFORM API. Let's move to the next field. This is for the category ID and the type attribute is category. This is a special type of field that builds a select list of categories for the component. You can find all the built-in types by looking at the libraries slash Joomla slash form slash fields folder. This field has a, a few new attributes to look at. The extension attribute defines which set of categories we're wanting to use. If we didn't supply it, we'd get all the categories for every component. Well, actually, it probably defaults to com content. The point is you need to specify the extension from which to list the categories. There's also an option provided in this field. Because this field is based on a select list, in addition to the list options it gets from the database, it can also prepend any options you include by hand. Now, if you're using categories for access control, you will not want to include a no category option. If you don't need access control, having a no category option is fine. It's up to you whether you keep it or not. The next field is for the title. It's similar to the ID field except we've given it a wider size. And you can also see that an attribute called required is set to true. 
By doing this, the edit page will include the necessary JavaScript to validate this form field on the fly, and it won't let you submit the form until you type something in. Similarly, when you submit the form, the JFORM API will automatically check that the title is populated in the request without you having to supply any of your own code. You can also see now that there are lots of standard language strings for common fields like the ID, the title and categories. Please use them to your advantage. The next field is for the alias and it's very similar to the title field except that it's not explicitly required. This is done so that we can leave it empty and have the component model generated for us. We saw the code for that in the last lesson. Moving on, the next field is for the body and this is an editor type. This will give you a WYSIWYG editor. The editor type also has a filter attribute. In our case, this is set to safe HTML, which will allow most safe HTML tags through. If you left this out, all HTML would be stripped from the content of the field which is not terribly useful for a WYSIWYG editor. You could also use raw if you didn't want any filtering to occur. The other attribute is buttons and we set that to true so that the editor buttons display. Next is the note field which is just another standard text field. Next is the published field which is given the type of list. This will give us a regular HTML select tag with the options defined in the field tag. You can see we've used the default attribute to define which option is selected. You can also see we've set the filter to interval. When the form processes the submitted data, we want it to convert this field into an integer. The filter attribute accepts regular PHP functions, which is handy to use in this case. It's always important to think about the type of data you want coming into the database from the request. The next field is for the ordering and it's another standard text type field. The next field is the access field which is given a type of access level. This will give us a list of the viewing access levels that are defined in the user manager. The next field is for the language and we give this the type of content language. This will look up the content languages defined in the language manager. Note that the content languages are different from the installed language packs. You can define any number of content languages even if you don't install them as language packs. The default case is star and this represents all languages. And you can see we include that as an option in the list and it will show up as the first option in the list. The next two fields are for MetaDesk and MetaKey and these are text area fields so we give them the additional attributes of row and col to control the size of the text area. The next three fields are for checked out checked out time and created user ID. We've added them with a type of hidden and a filter value called unset. This means that when the form is processed, if these values are set in the incoming request, they'll be stripped from the data. We've included the created time field so that we can actually display the value, but like previous fields, we unset the value because we don't want the user to be able to modify it. Finally, we treat modified user ID and modified time fields in the same way as created user ID and created time respectively. There's only one field left to handle and that's the params field. And this is handled simply but differently. What we need to do is close the field set tag that we open near the beginning of the file. Now, the params field is a complex field. It's actually a set of fields within a field except that we only want to store one value in the database. To do this, we open a fields tag and give it a name attribute that is the name of the field all the data is going to be stored in. In our case, that's params. Next, we open a field set for each set of parameters or options that we want to store. You can have as many field sets as you want and each one is rendered as a slider panel in the administrator template. You should give each field set a name and a label. Then in each field set, you just include the fields you want for the options that you need to provide for this type of record. You can see we've included a basic option to show the title of the record and an advanced option to select an alternative component layout for the record. When the form is submitted, all the options in the field sets are processed into a single JSON encoded string that is stored in the params field in the database. And that's about it. All we need to do now is make the edit view and we should be able to see our edit form and we'll do that in the next lesson. See you back soon.